Hi, I'm Chuck. Welcome to my channel. Today, I will take you through some important things you may want to know about MIDA Attack Framework. Before we dive right in, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. Click the like button and also hit the notification button to never miss any of my new videos. Let's get started. So what is MIDA Attack Framework? Let's break it down. MIDA is a not-for-profit corporation based in the United States and they developed Attack Framework. Essentially, Attack is a knowledge base that can help you model the tactics and techniques that cyber enemies or adversaries use and it also shows how to detect and stop such attacks. ATT&CK is an acronym which stands for Adversarial Tactics, Techniques, and Common Knowledge. A stands for Adversarial, which is from the word Adversary, meaning Enemy, or in this case, a Threat Actor. The first T stands for Tactics. Tactics tells you the goal of the attacker. For example, the goal could be to assess your network, escalate privilege, perform lateral movement within the network, and exfiltrate data. The second T stands for techniques. Techniques show how the enemies conduct the attack. CK stands for common knowledge. Common knowledge is the documented procedure for the attacks and techniques used by the adversaries. It goes into great details. Let's hop over to MIDA website and see those tactics and techniques and how they are organized in metrics. I'm going to search for MIDA attack. I will click on the first hyperlink. I will zoom in a little bit. When I click on the drop down next to metrics, you would see there are three domains available. Enterprise, Mobile and ICS. Each of the three domains cover a specific set of platforms. Enterprise covers Windows platform, Mac OS, Linux, PRE, PRE stands for Pre-Attack, Azure AD or Entra ID as Microsoft now calls it, Office 365, Google Workspace, Software as a Service, Infrastructure as a Service, Network and Containers. If I click on Mobile, you will see that it covers Android and iOS. ICS covers industrial control systems. You may have noticed that enterprise and mobile have similar tactics, but different techniques. The tactics and techniques used in both domains differ from that of ICS. For now, let's focus on the metrics for enterprise. The tactics are arranged at the top here. They include reconnaissance, resource development, initial access, all the way to exfiltration and impact. There are 14 tactics as of today. Keep in mind that MITRE keeps expanding the tactics and techniques based on the threat landscape and their recent discoveries. Under each of the 14 tactics, there are a number of techniques. For example, under reconnaissance tactic, I'll click on active scanning technique. You can see here, that there are three sub techniques scanning IP blocks, vulnerability scanning, and wordly scanning. If I scroll down, you will see the mitigation approach recommended by MITRE for the three sub techniques. You can also see the detection approach, which focuses mostly around monitoring. Generally, it is recommended that you monitor your network and systems and establish a baseline of what is considered normal. That way, you will be able to flag any significant deviation from the baseline and perform necessary investigations early on. If I scroll back up, you see I can drill down into any of the sub-techniques, for example, vulnerability scanning. You can see more specific details here related to vulnerability scanning. 
you can see under procedure example section that APT28 Threat Group has performed large scale scans in the past in attempt to find vulnerable servers, which can then be exploited. You can also see specific mitigation and detection approaches. So, what are the benefits of MITRE ATT&CK Framework? I mean, how can organizations leverage MITRE ATT&CK Framework to improve their cyber defense and security posture? Well, there are many benefits, but I think the biggest one is that organizations can gain knowledge of how adversaries operate. For example, the threat actor may start with reconnaissance, which can then help them gain initial access, move laterally within the network, exfiltrate data, or even establish persistence and remain undetected. Based on this knowledge, organizations can then create their red team to perform offensive operation against their own network. That way, gaps are proactively identified before attackers find them and the blue team are able to analyze and mitigate gaps more effectively by implementing appropriate security controls using necessary tools. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you found this informative. Please take a moment to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so and click the like button. Also press the bell icon to never miss any of my new videos. If you have any questions or comments, please enter them in the comment section below.